Hey! Uh, this week on Dave's Nano Tanks, we are going to plumb the 100 gallon to the sump and do the return line. And I figure at first I will just go over what I'm doing, show you real quick. But towards the end of this video, what I'd like to do, and a lot of you guys are going to know this stuff already, I want to go over what all the different parts are called and, you know, what different sizes mean, schedule 40, schedule 80, centrifugal pumps, pressures, things like that. And I'll just do that at the end because some guys just want to see me plumb this thing, how I'm going to do it. And uh, there's many different ways to plumb a sump. I'm just doing a very basic water overflows, pours into the sump, a pump pumps it back in, and you get that happy balance. And when the power goes off, we don't want any water on the floor. That's the basis of any real uh, sump system. So um, let's get started on that. Okay. I fitted these together, but I didn't glue them yet. And what this is is a valve, a T, a short nipple to go into the uh, bulkhead, and a cap that I drilled a hole in. Uh, this is all glued together. The cap I'm going to leave off for cleaning, because once it's up here I can remove the cap and brush down it. So what I would like to do is make sure they're level before I glue them in. So I have a little torpedo level here. Um, the type of plastic on the bulkhead is ABS, it's not PVC. There's a special glue for drilling ABS to PVC and yeah I don't use it because again we're not dealing with the pressure that's involved for what the codes require. I don't think an inspector is going to come out and check the fish tank and see what kind of glue I used. Um, it'll work. Got a good amount in there. A good amount around here. Grab that level. Push it flush. for a couple of seconds. And just drip some blue on my hand. I love it. That should be good. Let's do the other one. You can see that melts it because the black from the bulkhead is bleeding out. Now even if they weren't level, I could adjust them by loosening the bulkhead and twisting the whole bulkhead. Okay, I also glued up 245s. I kind of pre-measured it without you guys. I hope that's right. And uh, let me see if you're going to be able to see this. I'm probably going to be right in the way of this. These are going to sit like this. Now I built out a piece of 2x4 here. Um, I trimmed it down. It's about 2.5 inches. And um, this way I can clamp these to here. But I want to glue these in place. And these I'm just going to eyeball. Now I will also have pieces that extend down into here, but those I won't even glue. Those are just press fit. So if you want to put filter socks or something, you can actually remove them. Um, I've noticed I've, I've done it on the other tank and they don't fall in, so we should be all right. On these, let's give it one of those.
beautiful. Okay, we lost a little footage. Uh, I thought it was recording, and uh, so I did a few things. Oh, I thought it was recording. But this is what we got. We got the return pump down here. All right, comes up into a union, goes up into this L, and goes straight back behind the tank. I put this T in here and made, well, not quite a manifold, but I did tap off of it. So this is the idea behind a manifold, that I have a T here and a valve. I can adjust how much pressure goes out this. And all I'm using this for at the moment, now I can add to it because it's PVC, is I have this crazy looking lock line with a nozzle to help stir my large sump. All right, I want a little more flow in there, so instead of, I could add a power head, but I'm gonna take a little bit of the return motor and stir it in there. Um, either one works. One less power head's great. The two returns come down here, and this is what I'm talking about. I'm gonna leave these so they're removable. You just press them up in there, and they'll stay stuck nice. And here's what's going on in the back. So you see the two return lines come up. Got the two valves here. I can tune it so it doesn't gurgle as much. And my return line comes here, goes behind those two into a 45, and rests on top of the bulkheads. One piece goes out this way, and the other one's down the other end there. Hey guys, I said I'd talk about some uh, plumbing stuff, so let's talk about some plumbing stuff. Okay. This is my messy table because I just got done plumbing the 100 gallon. So, uh, things I don't need to talk about. You guys know what a tape measure is, right? Good. <laughs> uh, plumbing. Schedule 40 plumbing. Schedule 40 PVC plumbing. This is a piece of half inch. This is what you find at Home Depot. Um, this is a piece of one inch. This is thicker. Three quarter inch. Some pieces put together here. Um, for, schedule 40 is all you'll ever need for a fish tank. They make a schedule 80. It gives you an extra 100 PSI. So this one inch PVC is just under 300 PSI, I believe. Schedule 40 will put you just under 400. I, I doubt you're pushing 30 PSI in any application in a fish tank. My opinion, but I know we're not anywhere near 300. So, some fittings come only in 80, Schedule 80. Um, I've seen some gate valves that are pretty bulky, and that's how you'll notice things are Schedule 80. They're bulky, and they're usually not white, they're usually an off-white color, or almost a gray color as well. And um, if you need to get a particular item, and you can only get it in Schedule 80, yes, you can use it. They all fit together, one inch. 40 and 1 inch 80 parts, pipes, all fit together. Um, they're only thicker towards the inside. The outer diameter is the same on the pipe, and the parts get bulkier on the outside. All right, your, your standard things that you need to know about are pipes, elbows, and T's. That's a T, that's an elbow, that's a 90 degree elbow, and it's all slip. When you're dealing with all of the stuff that you'll be gluing, you'll just be using slip. If you're going from a threaded device, um, say you need to go back and forth from hose to pipe or from a pump, say. This is a pump piece that comes off of a J-bow and this is made to screw on there and it's barbed so you could put hose on there. Um, I'm not using hose, so I went and I found out what size this is. I think it was one inch thread, and I got an adapter that went, it's kind of the opposite of this adapter. <laughs> um, it went one inch thread to one inch slip was the adapter. And I think I had to reduce it down, which is what other things will do, is we'll reduce it from one size to another. So those are reducers that you need to know about. Um, when getting threaded things, 
You have to think like a plumber. Here's threads. These threads are male threads because they stick out. These threads are female threads because they stick in. Plumbing. Okay? That's all I can tell you. So, yes. Well, most of your, they call it a standard pipe thread. Um, most of them are the same. So, they will work. You know, I'm running into weird metric stuff. Maybe on some of your pumps you are. But a lot of times it's plastic and you can get a, around it. Okay, so when you're buying parts, it's good to know if you need slip or threaded. And also, if you're, when you're grabbing parts out of the bins in Home Depot, don't grab, like, I grabbed these two um, unions out of the bin. Got home and found out one was threaded and one was slip. I needed them both to be slip. They were both in the box that said slip. Just look at the stuff, okay? Because when you're, you know, you got enough going on and you're just grabbing two things, throwing them in, yeah, don't do that. Because I'm the type of person I don't return anything. It goes in a box. Someday I'll, I might need that, and I probably won't know where it is at that time. But unions allow you to, once you have things glued together, unions allow you breaks in them where you can open them, take them apart for maintenance and cleaning. And um, a good union, I would hope any union, has a gasket on one side. And that's the only thing that can really go wrong with the union. Um, make sure it's not twisted, has dirt in it, or you know, dented really bad in one spot, and that should be fine. The other thing that goes wrong with unions is people get pipe wrenches on them and twist them until something goes crack. And plastic parts really, um, I would say just a wet rag in your hands, you should be able to get just about anything tight enough. Maybe one grunt with a wrench, but this isn't, you know, auto mechanics here. You don't need to torque things. So, 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 what else we got? Um, when you're buying tees, if you want to change sizes within the tee, like a lot of times for manifolds, you'll have a larger one going through and smaller ones coming out of the tee. The way they measure tees and the way you order tees is they always give this measurement first. It's called the bowl of a tee. Okay? So if you wanted this to be three quarter, three quarter, half, they're going to go half, three quarter, three quarter. That's the way it works. Um, elbows also come in 45 degrees. Standard ones are 90 degrees. 45s are neat because it allows you to come down, change direction a little bit to get around something, and then you can put another one and you're still going straight. So you're keeping a vertical pipe. Um, if you have two 45s and put them together, you can make a 90 and a larger sweep to go around an obstacle as well. Another cool thing they have is called Street 90s. And what a Street 90 has is it's this one is slip female and slip male. Why is that good? What's that do for you? If you were trying to connect two regular elbows, you would need a short piece of pipe, and yes, it's called a nipple, to connect them together. Um, so you have two joints, two things you need to glue, three pieces instead of just getting a street, you can save room, and you'll even see these in some kind of, some of the Durso overflows to have less parts. Okay, it takes up less space. So that's called a street 90. Uh, and they, make them, they make bigger ones too, see? And couplings. Couplings are your lifesaver. If you're not planning on using any couplings, Throw three, four of them in your cart. Because if you make a mistake and you glue this pipe this way and it was supposed to be this way, you can either throw the whole thing away or you can cut it and put a, put a coupling in. Figure out where you want it. What I'd sometimes even do, if it's confusing, I'll draw lines on it and then glue the two sections together. So that's called a coupling. And the nice thing about a coupling is Although it does have a stop in the middle, that stop's about the same size as a saw blade. So if you cut a nice straight line and put a coupling in, you're going to be the same length of pipe, you know, by micrometers. <laughs> All right, does that just about do it for uh, what we want to talk about? We got some cool hangers. 
These are the ones a half inch, one's a three quarter. I love these things. They sell in the Home Depot. They even come with two nails. And um, if you're doing some work under your tent, and say this comes up and goes over here, boom, you can hang it. You can put a screw in this way or a nail, this way or this way or this way. You can cut this off where you need it if it's too long. And uh, all kinds of hangers. They have the ones I like too that come all the way around and then have two little ears on them with two screw holes. I call them Mickey Mouse clamps. I don't have any here. Oh, PVC slip cap. Okay, cap a piece. If you future manifold and you don't have the parts yet, you can glue a cap on it and stop the water right there. What I use them for is for the top of my returns. Um, I come out of the back of the tank with a T. This isn't the right size. And I put a cap on it. <coughs> I never glue the, the cap so I can remove it. I can actually swab down the pipe if I need to. But what, what else the cap does for me is I drilled a hole in it and it allows me to put just hose down it. I put the hose down and then I, I tie a knot on the top and the hose goes down to where the below where the air and water are mixing and it takes the gurgle out. You can adjust it by what height you need and just tie a knot in the hose. So caps are cool too. Uh, do we talk about glue? Uh, here's the subject. I don't want to have an argument with anybody, right? <laughs> glue should be liquid-like, water-like, okay? If it doesn't do that, get some more because it's old. That means you left the cap loose last time you used it. When you're gluing pipe together, glue the inside of the fitting and the outside of the pipe. Stick them together, give them a little twist, and hold them there. It, the first couple of seconds, if you push it together, these are tapered. So it'll actually push itself back out a quarter inch. And you don't need that. So you want to seat it all the way to its stop and hold it till the glue dries. Now, why I said I don't want to start an argument, this is all I use. It's just the cement. A lot of guys prime. It's good for you. Um, priming's good. They sell primer in a house. I would prime. If it was being inspected, I would prime. In a fish tank, I don't prime. I'm not telling you guys not to prime. Don't say Dave said not to prime. I don't have leaks when I don't prime. So, that's me. <laughs> so, the primer, uh, they even make a glue that says it primes by itself, too. Um, they make a shampoo that says it conditions, too. I don't, I don't believe that one or the glue one. So, just to go on record on both of those, the all-in-one stuff usually doesn't do either one well, in my opinion. So, there's a purple primer that you can put on there. There's even a cleaner, too. If you want to have three, four bottles of crap, go ahead. Um, the glue's all I use. But you would put the primer on, let it dry, and then you put the glue on. This glue isn't just glue. It actually chemically bonds by melting these two chemically together. Okay, I don't know why I need primer for that. My personal opinion. Okay, that's about all I got to say about plumbing and for a moment. I'm sure I'll think of 10 other things as soon as I end the video. But thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, um, put them down in the comments section. And I'd be glad to, I, I love getting the comments from you guys. So we could talk about this stuff all day long in the comments. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Maybe we'll get this tank up and running. We're going to put a few fish and some sand in there and some rocks. All right, guys. Good night.